Welcome to another video on slow mechanics and today we're going to be covering the topic of shear force and bending moment diagrams and we're going to be looking at some graphical methods on how to draw those diagrams based on the free body diagram. So the first thing we need to remember is that when you are looking at any type of structure and it could essentially be just a simple beam like this. If you actually split this up somewhere in the middle or at any point you choose by the condition of static equilibrium you should have some internal forces in there that would balance out the external forces on each of them so for example if you have some force that is going in this direction or something then you would need to have a shear force which is essentially an internal force reaction that occurs to balance out that external force and the same happens with moments you're going to have moments that are going to balance out whatever rotations are going to be caused by the external forces and moments so in general, when you split it up, we consider the left hand side of that cut to be uh, to have a shear force going downwards like this, and then the bending moment is going to be going anti-clockwise. Whereas for the right hand side of the cut, we're going to have the shear force pointing up, and then the bending moment acting in a clockwise fa fa uh, fashion. So the reason for that is that we want these forces, once you add up these two structures and then you combine them together, we want them to basically cancel each other out. And this is kind of just notation, but it doesn't necessarily mean that this is the way that you should always write it, but this is kind of tradition on how we actually define those directions. Now, to actually draw a shear force and bending moment diagram, the first thing you need is you need to know all the forces acting on the system, and that includes the reactions at the supports. So in this case, we're going to start and we're going to call this point A and B. And we're going to find the reactions at points A and B. So essentially, we have this free body diagram. So we have a force, let's call it reaction A. Then we have reaction B. Now we're going to ignore the reaction on this support here at on the left hand side, simply because we know that there are no horizontal forces acting on this system. So we can safely ignore that. And then we have the external force of 5 kN acting right at the middle of this cross section. So we have 1 meter distance between those two points and then another meter over here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find the reaction forces. So let's take the sum of the forces in the y direction. So we have Ra plus Rb minus 5. So Ra plus Rb is equal to 5. And then we're going to take the sum of the moments. Let's do it in this direction about point A. So now we're going to have this times 1, that's going to be going clockwise, so that's 5 times 1. And then we're going to have 2RB, but that's going to be in the opposite direction, so that becomes 2RB. So what this implies now is that we have RB is going to be equal to 2.5 kN, which means, of course, that RA is going to be 2.5 kN. And we could have inferred that just from the symmetry of the problem, because we can see that this kind of beam is loaded the same way on both sides, so the force is only acting in the middle. So we could have e easily just split this up into two and it would have given us the same result. But this is the more rigorous approach that we should take. Now in order to actually compute the shear force and bending moment diagrams, what I'd like to do is I'd like to draw, so let's suppose this is our free body diagram, we have a force of 2.5 over here. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to draw the shear force diagram right beneath this one. So I'm just going to draw a set of axes like this. So over here we're going to have distance x, so we consider this the horizontal distance from support A, that's going to be at zero. And then we're going to have the shear force as a function of the distance. Now what we see here is that we have a bunch of point loads, so they only act at a single point. And what this means is that we're only going to have a constant shear force throughout this structure. So for example, between this section here and the middle of the section, we have exactly the same shear force distribution all throughout. And the same thing happens on the other half of the structure because we only have point loads. So the first thing we do is we look, okay, so starting out at A, we have a 2.5 kN force pointing upwards. So we're going to start over here and we're going to go up by 2.5 kN. So I should probably specify that this is kN, this is meters. 
and now we're going to do okay so this force is going to remain constant so it's going to be a straight line until we get to the middle so at this point that's at one meters then we're going to go down by five kilonewtons so this force is going to be down so now we're going to subtract five from this which is going to become minus 2.5 that should be minus so we're going to have the force is just going to drop down like that so it's going to change direction quite fast and then we're going to keep going that's going to be constant all the way here so we're going to go up by 2.5 again and we go back to zero and this is what we would call the shear force diagram for this particular structure underneath this kind of loading so you can see that this method is quite useful because you can do it basically by just following the same direction in which you have those forces acting on the system now the next thing we gotta notice is that this area over here is positive this one is negative the reason we need to identify that is because in the bending moment diagram the sign convention here is going to be important and the reason for that is that the relationship between a bending moment and a shear force is that the bending moment is the integral of the shear force with respect to the distance dx so using this relationship we can actually integrate this function and then we can find the bending moment diagram so I'm gonna draw it down here so once again we draw a set of axes this is gonna go up here so that's xm we have the bending moment that's gonna be in kilonewton times meters and now we start at zero now with the bending moment we do kind of the same thing if we see any bending moments acting at a specific point on this structure then we would do the same thing we did here we would just draw them as constant lines but if we just have just this kind of area on the shear force diagram all we do is we integrate it so to start off with we're gonna start at zero and then this means that we have an area so this area over here is 2.5 times 1 so that has an area of 2.5 kilonewton times meters so that's gonna be the bending moment at the point that we come to one meter over here so basically we're gonna draw a straight line because remember this is a uh, this is a horizontal this is a constant function if you integrate a constant you get a linear function which means this should be a linear equation like that so we're gonna go from 0 all the way to 2.5 which is the total area over here so that's gonna be 2.5 there and then for the next one we're going to do since we know this is negative it also has an area of 2.5 but in this case we say the area is negative so that means that we're gonna subtract 2.5 from this and it is going to descend in the same linear fashion because this is also a constant value of the shear force so we're going to go down with the same gradient but now it's going to go in the opposite direction and now that's going to be our bending moment diagram so what we can tell from this is that the maximum bending moment occurs right at the middle of the section as is expected because of the symmetry of this problem and then the next thing we're going to notice is that okay so we have the maximum bending moment is 2.5 kilonewton times meters and this occurs at one meter so at the middle and this is going to be quite important for when we're dealing with other things like bending stress and transverse shear and so on. We're going to have to use these diagrams to identify those locations for when those maximum values occur. And in the next video, we're going to continue with some more examples of this. And, and I'll show you how you can analyze structures that are a lot more complicated.